Okay, chapter two of connecting networks is connecting to the WAN. In this chapter, you have four sections. We're going to do the intro, the WAN technology, selecting a WAN technology, and we'll go over a summary. What you need to make sure that you pay attention to and that you're able to do by the end of chapter two is you need to be able to describe the purpose of a WAN describe WAN operations, describe WAN services that are available, compare the various uh, private WAN technologies along with the public WAN technologies. And then you need to be able to select the appropriate WAN protocol and service for specific network requirements. So with our WAN technologies, you may ask why choose a WAN? Well, it operates beyond the geographic scope of the LAN. Okay, remember LAN is our local area network, our WAN is our wide area network. So we need to be able to uh, network our devices across a large span of space. It's used to interconnect the enterprise LAN to remote LANs and branch sites and telecommuter sites. And it's owned by a service provider, such as AT&T, Time Warner, uh, RST, those types of services. And the organization must pay a fee to use the provider services to connect sites. Now, are these WANs necessary? Well, businesses require communication, like I said, across large distances. If we have a, a corporate office, in North Carolina, then we have another one in Florida, we may have one in Singapore. We need to be able to connect all these locations together. So our regional or branch offices must be able to communicate. They have to be able to share data for us to be functional and um, get the job done that we need to get done. Uh, you need to be able to share it with other customers, other organizations maybe that you're working with. Uh, mobile workers need to be able to access this information if they're traveling for business. And then home computer users must send and receive data across increasingly larger distances. Um, for you guys, you're in an online class, so you need to be able to uh, transfer data back and forth with me uh, to get your work submitted. So there are many different reasons to use a WAN and why WANs would be necessary. With our evolving, net, evolving networks, companies expect their networks to perform optimally. Uh, you can't tell them uh, we can't do that. They expect you to be able to have their data where they need it. We have what's called span engineering. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about with this um, curriculum today. Uh, Span Engineering is an environmental consult consulting firm. Let's consider that um, and see what we can do for their business. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at Span Engineering and figure out what they need, how they need it, and what's going to be best for them. Let's say that Span has been in business for four years. It's grown to include 15 employees, six engineers, four computer-aided drawings. That's your CAD designers. Um, you have your receptionist, you have two senior partners, and two office assistants. Right now, we use a single LAN to share information between computers, to share peripherals such as your printers, your plotters, your fax equipment. And then we've upgraded the LAN to provide inexpensive voice over IP service to save on the cost of separate phone lines for the employees. Okay, so we're going to use that internet connection for our voice over IP. The connection to the internet is through a common broadband service called DSL and it uses support services purchased from the DSL provider. Now, this company is also using a hosting service rather than purchasing and operating its own uh, FTP and email server. So it's letting someone else handle this. Okay, so let's jump ahead five years. Span Engineering has grown significantly. Uh, we've contracted to design and implement a full-sized waste conversion facility. They've won other projects in neighboring municipalities and in other parts of the country. Okay, so they're, that means that their area has grown. Uh, they've hired more staff. They've leased more office space with several hundred employees. 
and organized itself into functional departments. Okay, so we have our departments that we can look at. The network now consists of several sub-networks, each devoted to the different departments that we have. Okay, so we've got them separated that way. Now we have multiple LANs are joined to create a company-wide network or a campus, which spans several floors of the building. Okay, so we've gone from our small office with a few employees to our corporate office now. We have different departments. Here we have marketing and sales, finance and accounting, engineering and production. And then each of these are set up as a LAN and then we have our firewall that heads out to the internet. Okay. So now let's look at the branch networks. We've jumped ahead another six years and span engineering has just gone through the roof. They have many more employees, they have more locations, they're not just in one city any longer. And to manage these projects, the companies open small branch offices, uh, they have a data center that houses their various databases and servers, they must now implement a WAN. And its branch offices, there are in nearby cities, but they're not in the same location. And the company decides to use private, dedicated lines through their local service provider, uh, for those offices that are located in other countries, the internet is what they're going to use for their WAN. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. Okay, now we've got what's called a distributed network. The business has been in going for 20 years. It's international. Uh, the cost of the network and its related devices is big expense, and they're looking to provide the to provide the best network services at the lowest cost, uh, engineering, teleworking, teleworking, and sorry about that, encouraging teleworking and virtual teams. Web-based applications are being used to increase productivity and reduce cost. And they're also looking at site-to-site -site and remote access or VPNs to enable the company to use the internet con to connect easily and securely with its employees, because after all, you want to work most efficiently. The network requirements can change dramatically as a company grows, because we've gone from a small business to a large international business. Though, so their needs have definitely changed. We've been distributing employees, saves so cost in many ways, but it puts increased demands on the network, okay, because people are everywhere, doing everything and we need our network to keep up. And the network must be able to grow as your company grows and changes. Uh, the network designers and administrators are the ones who meet these challenges by carefully choosing uh, the correct network topologies, the right protocols to use, and what service providers you need to use. That in the long run comes down to you. You're the one who's going to be um, researching this information to see who to go with and by optimizing their networks. Okay, so here we go. We have our teleworkers, we have a home office user, we have people all over the world working. So the network designer has got to keep all this information in mind uh, so that they can work efficiently and be productive. In your online uh, ebook for this section, uh, activity on 2.1.8 is a great place for you to see if you understand each portion of what's going on here. Uh, here's part one. You do have part two, part three, and part four. You're going to tell exactly what it is. Check it. See if you're correct. You can always reset it to make sure you understand um, the different network descriptions. So I would recommend that you go through this a couple of times, make sure you understand what's going on.